Visit No One Likes Us Clothing for all your Millwall clobber. www.noonelikesus.co.uk Hi, I'm Gary Rowett, and you're listening to the world-famous Acton Millwall. Hello, dear listeners. That sound effect you can hear is, of course, the Gary Rower Express train, which has started up again in the wake of a blistering, blistering 3-0 win over Watford at the Den last night. Joining me to kick over the traces of that excellent home victory last night is show regular Michael Avery. Welcome to the show, Mike. Good morning, afternoon, evening, listeners. Uh, yeah, so... It... Gary Rowich train always reminds me of that train from Dumbo with all the clowns on jumping around, but <laughs> but it seems to be going in the right direction. It's well, it was. It, I thought it was one of the best home performances, best performances. Let's let's get it right that I've seen in in uh, in some years. I'm gonna. I'm thinking back to the Forest away win off the top of my head. Um, so we, we're we're going to kick over that in a moment, listeners. But first, I just want to point you all out there in listening to this show at the promotion we're doing at the moment with a wonderful little uh, board game called Pundit. It's a bit like a football trivial pursuit, Michael. Do you like a board game? Like Richard Chaplow, Mike? I I, I am partial to a board game. You know, Cluedo comes out in the house a lot, as does Monopoly. This is going down the same kind of route, listeners, as Trivial Pursuit, only it's football. Um, I've got a a question, just an example question for you, Michael, and also for the listeners. If Michael doesn't get this, I'll read out the answer at the end of the show, listeners. So just to begin us off, this is um, a different category. This is England, English football in the 2000s. So uh, this Nigerian player was amongst the Premier League's most entertaining players to watch. Bolton fans chanted that he was so good, they named him twice. He was voted Player of the Year in Nigeria seven times, and he played an important role in their legendary Olympic side that won gold in Atlanta in 1996. His career took in such diverse clubs as Borussia Neunkirchen, Eintracht Frankfurt, Fenerbahce. In 2002, he left Paris Saint-Germain. He joined Bolton, which is where we'll know him. In 2002 to 2006, he played 124 times for Bolton, scored 14 goals. Then he went to Qatar and finished his career at Hull City. Nigerian international, 73 caps, 14 goals for the Nigerian national team. So good, listeners, they named him twice. So that's the kind of question that you're going to get in Pundits. Michael, got any ideas off the top of your head? Only if I can get a royalty, copyright-free version of the Mastermind Friendship <laughs> fan over the top. <laughs> to buy Pundits, and you will like it, I think, listeners, for Christmas. It's a great game. It's for the football head in your family. Visit punditgames.co.uk. Pundit, P-U-N-D-I-T, games.co.uk. You'll get a 10% discount at the checkout with the code LIONS in capital letters. And every sale of this board game, listeners, generates money for the Lions Food Hub. That's the terms of the deal. We don't advertise much on this show, uh, Michael. And it's only ever one that's going to benefit the Lions Food Hub. And every sale will generate money for the Lions Food Hub, Pundit. So, um, Michael, any idea on that answer off the top of your head? First one that comes to mind is JJ Okocha. Yeah, you got it. You be That will move you one place forward towards the goal. Um, and that, that's the that's the format of the game. Where's yeah, my cheese? Move... If it's trivial pursuit, where's my cheese? No, no, you move forward. You dribble forwards into the opposition's half. You get four, uh, I think it's five questions in a row. Right, you score a goal. And um, you play it over 45 minutes. Uh, so, and obviously the highest goal score wins. Pundit.co.uk. UK. If, if, it, if it was a real football game, dear listener, I'd fall over after dribbling about a yard or one step. So there we go. That's why I referee now. There yeah. we are. That's, 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 our, that's our promotional part done, Michael. Um, what a performance last night, mate. I thought it was a, one of the best home showings I can remember in a long time. Uh, really enjoyable game to watch. I couldn't make it down there last night. And just, I watched it on Sky. And um, wonderful, wonderful entertainment. I thought it was a brilliant, brilliant performance by the Lions. I think it was um, It was a great game to, to watch, don't get me wrong. I, I think it very much sort of, sort of reeked of that kind of 
job done with class. You know, we, mm. we got the goals early. We took our chances well. Bradshaw was absolutely brilliant um, last night. Got got a very early hat-trick. Got the goals and then we uh, we done the classic game management, which every modern manager likes to do because Watford, I think Watford didn't really have a shot on target till like the 88th minute. So, no. it was a fantastic, profession, a very professional performance by Millwall. Went out, got the job done, knew what we needed to do. Um, apart from... The occasional misplaced pass. I thought we, we moved the ball quite nicely. We got stuck in quite nicely. We had shape. We had discipline. And I just don't think Watford could have um, could have kept up with us. And I, I, I don't know how it came across on the TV, Nick, but Watford looked absolutely clueless because they just did not know what to do against us. They couldn't break us down. They looked bewildered. Um, and I, one thing that really came out... I mean, I wasn't there last night. Couldn't make it, listeners. But watching it on TV... Um, I was really struck by the pace and energy that we brought to the occasion that Watford just couldn't match. In the pre-match show, they were talking about um, that Watford, I think, came into it with um, quite a decent record. I mean, they're only one place in above us, but um, they, they were a decent side, ex-Premier League side. So they were talking about their, their desire to get back to the top flight again. But I thought we just blew them away with with the, the running and the and, and the, our willingness to, to tackle hard. Um, as ever, each goal has come from a set piece um, or a free kick or a dead ball situation. Um, seven they minutes in. They all count. Uh, exactly, Mike. I mean, they all count. Um, I thought the first goal was was brilliant. Um, goal sniffing, you know. I mean, Bradshaw, he's, he's a player that's, uh, I suppose, like any forward, really uh, lives on, on confidence. But that first goal, long ball forwards, which he picks up as a kind of like a loose, I think it was a loose um, header from the Watford defender under pressure. And he, he, he put that away of a plum. That's, that was top level finishing. Yeah, it really was. And I, I always used to like mock people, mock people who, uh, as a laugh, who, who was always in the toilet when people scored and said, oh, if you didn't see that goal live, you know, you don't know what you're missing. But I yeah. mean, that, that yesterday, like I was right behind him when he hit that and you could just see the intention. He, he didn't just sort of hit and hope that. You could see even the way he angled his foot before he's, un, he's yeah. connected. It's a top, top class finish. And the setting, the way it just flew in the top corner was was just a great, great thing to see. He, I thought he had a fantastic game, Bradshaw. Um, also, have a, have a sort of a comment for the back four to look so much more comfortable when we have four at the back compared to normal five. And, and even a Vogue slammer. I thought he had a great game, considering he's had quite a quiet um, start to his Millwall career. He was very involved in a lot of action. You know, he won a few fouls and he, he, he seemed pretty good. Um, maybe not Fleming levels of influence yet, but I thought uh, for a player who had that reasonable start restart, he, he, he did very, very well. Absolutely. 2-0 um, up on 25 minutes. Um, again, three kick launches forward. Um Bennett and, and uh, slams it in from the left side, and Bradshaw's in the in the danger zone to, to put it away. Um, great positioning to be in the in the right place at the right time. And I, I thought at that stage, Watford were just looking like um, you know, if it was a boxing match, you'd probably would have thrown the towel in from your corner because they 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 look pretty clueless. I mean, as as you say, Mike. I mean, there's the first shot, the well, first uh, opportunity of any. Any note really? It didn't come till till late. Um, Ninety plus one, they hit the post, um, and then there's a, 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 a side netting. I think it was after that that they uh, they missed the chance. Apart from that, they weren't really at the at the races. And I think you've got to take your hat off to you know Gary Rowe, which's been taking a lot of flack this season, hasn't he? And mm. You know, just looking at some of the pre-match notes, this is from the, the club's, um, not quite a programme notes, but they send it out on, on email. And one of their talking points they picked up was at Watford, uh, they had the top of the, drib the dribbling statistics, so suggesting they've got potent force of the ball at their feet. Talking about um, the Brazilian uh, João Pedro um, being particularly dangerous. I mean, if that's knowing that going into the game, clearly the Lions have, have, have decided to take the game to them in a certain way, I'd prep the sign ready for that because they didn't show a sniff of that across the whole ninety minutes, certainly until we added time. You know, he's, he's taken a pounding, Gary Rowett, and he gets a lot of criticism on, on shows like this at times. Some of it justified, but equally, when it goes right, and it went very, very right last night for me, you got to take your hat off to him, Mike. Yeah, it was very, very confident performance and. It's it's real chalk and cheese, as you say, to a few weeks back and a couple of months ago when people were actually questioning 
you know, whether this team wants to play for Gary Rowett. Has yeah. Rowett got the dressing room? Does he know yeah. what he's doing? Last night, I mean, I'm not sure if you're going to put Harry's voice notes in before this or after this, but um, Harry was right. That that was a, that was a a, a a performance that you know waxing lyrical how good it was. It, it's it's the type of performance that you'd expect from a team pushing for the top six. And if there was there was people around us, I mean, we don't get overly carried away because it, it was one good performance. You know, with this mm-hmm. league, it's about yeah. being consistent. Um, yeah. But if we do play like that. You know, you, you will certainly be looking up because, as you say, Watford there, they had a lot of players who were worth a lot more than us. They're, they're the ones who at the start of the season, a lot of people were thinking they might go up. You know, that yes, they've changed their manager, but they had a, 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 a sort of pro, a manager who'd done well, won promotion with a smaller club. And now they've got Billy Chin, who knows how to get out of the championship. Good manager uh, at this level, as mentioned, the Premier League. And yeah. they just could not get near us. I thought, I think, to be fair to Watford and their fans, they did bring a lot down. An awful lot of fans, Dan. And if I was one of those away fans, I'd be absolutely furious that I made that journey, Dan, and we was 3 0 down within what half hour, what, 35 minutes? 32 and, minutes from 3 0. Yeah. Um, that was the Bradshaw yeah. hat trick, um, which was an, a neat kind of um, turn, turn inside the box, wasn't it? I and mean, put it away quite deftly inside the box from, a, I think it was a Jake Cooper um, knockback. Um, made it 3 0. 32 minutes hat trick. Which puts um, I see just literally before we started recording, I'm just seen a, me- a meme online saying mentioning Son Hung Min uh, on 14 minutes, Erling Haaland on 90 minutes, then Tom Bradshaw on 25 minutes as fastest hat tricks in 22 23. Um, so the company's keeping is Erling, Erling Haaland, uh, Ivan Tony, Erling Haaland, and Song Hung Min, which is pretty good going for a player that's that's had his um, confidence issues this season and. Yeah. Um, Hats off to him. The third goal really settled matters. I mean, I always that's a cliche, isn't it? Two 0 being a dangerous lead, you can you can never entirely exclude um, the unexpected at then. But that third goal really, for me, settled it. And they they focused in a lot on on um, Bilic, who, as you say, Mike, is an experienced manager at some pretty high levels. I mean, he's managed the Croatian national team and Premier League sides, and he's, I, I I rate him as a decent manager. But they he just looked. Um, it looked like an empty shell. It looked like there's truss, an empty shell, you know, there but not there, so yeah. to speak. Um, and I, I dare say, I mean, I, coming over loud and clear on the uh, on on the, <laughs> on the soundtrack was um, various insults being directed in his direction with his West Ham connection. So, um, you know, it, 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 overall, it was a miserable night to be a Watford supporter, I would say. Um, and they're a, they're a team that would have expected to be contenders, but they didn't like contenders last night at Zampa Road at all. What what Watford were bad, don't get me wrong, and I think that sort of half did help us out a little bit, but I don't think, as, as we've said a few times, and just to reiterate a point, I don't think you can take anything away from that Millwall performance. E- everyone was on, on form. You had Billy Mitchell had a great game. He's had a couple of critics over the last couple of years. He's done a right yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Billy Mitchell had a great game. Fleming, even though considering Fleming had quite a quiet game, he still was quiet effective at times and um another shout out for mason bennett our 60 minute wonder you i mean you can uh i think i think they sort of like a uh, sort of time big ben to when mason bennett gets substituted <laughs> that's the exact time he comes <laughs> off but what's it what 60 minutes and it always goes back to that cliche we say with mason bennett if he was fit he certainly wouldn't be playing for us and if he could play more minutes he'd be even more dangerous and deadly because I thought that was a great performance from him yesterday there's still that little bit every time he gets tackled everyone sort of hope you hear the whole ground hold their breath yeah you, you kind of hold think, your breath yeah. you know and like the bit when his shin pad um, flew out I thought that might have been a body part knowing uh, <laughs> Mason Bennett's luck <laughs> but um, I thought we added a real hard running touch I mean you know it's, it's unfair to compare Tyler with with Mason because it's actually two quite different players I mean but Mason is a much more physically strong player on the ball um and when he's fit is that the caveat of course when he's fit when he's when he's um in one piece so to speak he's he's, he's, a, he's a very very strong left-sided presence for us uh, I mean, at the end of the first half, my, I've, I've just noted to myself the amount of energy we brought to the game, the fact we, we pressed them so well, and we made them look very, very much second best at the end of a, what I well, repeat again, blistering first half. As they left the field, the Sky commentary team described that as perfection, which, um, I mean, given that Watford never even looked remotely dangerous in the first period at all, and we went three up and probably could have been 
four up because I think there was um, Jake had a kind of a, a, a flurry in front of goal where he couldn't quite get his foot on the ball as it dropped down to him. It could have been four nil at half time, um, but three nil we'll, we'll settle for. Yeah. Um, second half, yeah, I mean, I suppose it is this modern thing, Mike, of game management. Um, I suppose when you're three goals to the good, you you kind of um, settle for it. There was a slight sense, if I'm going to be picky, of anti-climax in the second half. It would be nice to have pressed on and got some some more, but um, one mustn't be greedy in this life. And the, and the um, you know, the substitutions, the, the three-way sub, and then uh, there was uh, Bennett coming off on, on uh, 59 minutes for his hour, as, you, as you've already said. Kind of took some of the... Um, steam out of the the railway train somewhat, but um, it finished three 0 And you know, apart from the couple of late, late, late chances for Watford, it was pretty much a flawless performance. And I think you got to take your hat off to to where we've been. Because I mean, you know, we that that, that presses on from a, a weekend uh, win at, uh, at Bristol, and you know, I wouldn't say that was a flawless performance down there, but it was a pretty good performance. And you know, you do start to feel some momentum going at last at the den. It's great to see. Yeah, and, and you know, I'm going to agree with Sky there, saying it's perfection, because it's not like them as a broadcaster to over-dramatise situations, um, is it? But um... <laughs> No, or to, or to look, for the, or look, look for the easy shot with Millwall, you know, I mean, yeah. um, they, they, they will always look for the easy dig, um, and for the most part, for the most part, they, they had a little laugh before the game kicked off on the pre-match show about um, it being an intimidating place to come and no one enjoys it. But I, I, I take that as a compliment because yeah. um, clearly <laughs> Watford didn't enjoy their trip down the uh, the M40 into town. Um, I, think, I think going back to what you were saying as well though, about the second half, I think this is this is where, you, like you were saying about the modern game, yeah, it would be nice to get a few more goals. And one of my friends who was at the game me last night, even he said, he was like, oh, you know, Watford have had a lot more of the ball. And I'm like, but... But our, our job's done, you know, like, mm. like very, very, very rarely. I mean, yes, in the Premier League, you've had some big scoring games with like the Man City's and Liverpool's turning team over. But they've got obviously resources and players that we, we never, ever will have. But if you get if you get a 3-0 midweek win, that's a huge result. That's massive. You know, like it's not it's not just it's not just the the, the fact you've won. It's it's the convincing way you've won. You know, you've got yep. a good, decent goal difference there and the fact you've not conceded a clean sheet. So... I think yes, even though you can argue not not as much happened in the second half. If you are, I, ha- I hate to say this because it sounds like a little bit um, sort of swami, if you will. But if you're a fan of the modern game, you probably would have been as entertained with the second half as you would with the first because it was such a professional performance. Of this is how you defend. This is how you contain. Right. This is how yeah. you contain. If you're a football yeah. man and this is how you want to and you want to watch the game. It was a mar- it was it was a, it was an attacking masterclass in the first half. It was a defensive masterclass in the second half. There was so how many times last night did Watford just ping or just try and ping diagonal passes from one side of the pitch to the other, and it just did not work out because that's all they could do. And that's what I've said, sort of said to one of my friends. I was Absolutely. like, just let them do it. Just let them ping it around because what what are they going to do? What are they going to do on the halfway line when you're freeing them up? Absolutely nothing. But if we press them and they get back on around us on the counter, then the game comes three one. It's a little bit more squeaky bum. So keep it at three nil. Is it? I just thought it was an absolute masterclass last night. Yes, maybe slightly boring in the second half, but still rose tinted glasses. It was, it was very professional. yeah. I, mean, I didn't find it boring in the second half. I think for the reason you just said because um, obviously our, our, our prime um, with the substitutions too. I think once Bennett went off, you could start to feel that uh, Gary Rout was settling for a three nil win. Wanted a three nil win. Um, no goals conceded, clean sheet, which we, we by hook or by crook, we got there. They hit the, the post, didn't they, in late, late. But I mean, even, the, even that one that hit the post, Nick, like, you could tell the way they followed up, like, they didn't follow up. They That was a complete hit and hope chance. It's hit the foot yeah. of the post, bounced off, and no one's chased after it. And even Watford didn't even sort of, like, you know, let out a cheer, and we all laughed. Well, the people I was around was laughing. Because, <laughs> it, you know, it's like, it was... It, it was like when you take a four-year-old to like mini soccer and they run up to the goal and kick it against the post, you know, when they should have scored. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it was it, it, to, 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 to say that was, I mean, obviously, according to stats, you do. But to say that come close and all that, you think he didn't really. And that that wouldn't have been any catalyst. That would have just been unfair on Mill Football Club if that went in. But it, the, it, it, um, 
funny moment was the ole ole when they were passing the ball yeah. the second half i mean these are the moments that you uh that you you know that you live for at millwall it was it was, it was wonderful i mean with, with a hat trick um it's very hard not to make tom bradshaw man of the match michael did you have any other thoughts on, on standout performances or would you go with bradshaw or would you go elsewhere for you uh, pop, most pop, valuable pop. player to use an americanism um, possibly, possibly you can give Hutch a shout out, Billy Mitchell, Vog Slammer yeah. again, Bennett for his 60 yeah. minutes. But yeah, you can't you can't not give it to Bradshaw. I mean, even even when he even when he wasn't scoring, he was in the game, he was influencing, he was looking for the ball, he was making the right runs. I thought, yeah, he had a great game, really, really good game. And and um, I mean, my boy, when we went yesterday, he was asking, obviously, you know, when's Bart going to get back in the side because he's a big fan of Bart. But you know, has 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 I mean, as much as I like Bierkowski, which I do. Has the introduction yeah. of George Long maybe helped with this run, you know, behind the scenes, you know, you know, Bart Bart was always like a leader and stuff like that. But so so George, George Long was brought in as a leader as well. You you, you don't know what he's saying to the team. How uh, him being there in a new system, new structure might actually enforce a little bit of confidence in the in the side. Achtung, Mailball. Do their talking, Michael. Didn't they? Yeah. Results do the talking and. Um, uh, I don't know if it's so directly, um, but um, certainly George Long has come in when results have turned. And, and you know, question last night was ch uh, changing a winning team. Well, Tyler Bury was on the bench and, and Mason Bennett replaced him for the better. Um, I think there's probably lessons to be learned there for, for Tyler, who's a young player, can yet pick up on. I mean, he'll probably never completely match the likes of of, um, of uh Mason Bennett for physicality because that was what really stood out for me last night. Um, but you know, it's, it's one thing to be beautiful on the ball. It's, you've also got to deliver some some physical presence, and maybe let's hope that's the direction that they try and develop Tyler's gaming without losing the skill. Um, but yeah, goalkeeper. Yeah, I mean, results turn your way. Um, you know, you become undroppable, don't you? At a certain point, so yeah, a couple exactly. of good saves he made as well last night. I thought I thought Long did a did a good job. I just wanted to mention, I mean, you've mentioned um, Vogel Slammer. Slammer. I'm not going to fall into this trap, listeners, of mispronouncing his name. It's Vogel Slammer. And all I keep hearing is people saying Vogel Slammer. It's not Vogel Slammer. So I'm not, I'm, if you hear me mispronouncing, listeners, email. I was, me, oh, I've, I've mispronounced it a couple of times as well. I do apologise. Vogel um, Slammer. Um, Vogel Slammer. So I, liked I wonder, him last I wonder night. people laughed at me when I got his name on the back of my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Mitch, George Savile. Uh, I mean, you could pick out the whole team in, in truth. I just wanted to mention Danny Mack as well because I thought he did, he did a good job last night um, in defence. Uh, but you can you can go across the whole side and obviously three goal hat trick hero Tom Bradshaw. Speaking after the game, Millwall now sitting in eighth position. Michael, one point behind, two points behind Sheffield United in fourth. And three points behind Burnley in third position. Speaking after the game, Gary Rowett described the first 15 minutes of tonight, last night's game um, as horribly beautiful. I quite like that. This is a quite poetic turn of phrase, isn't it? Horribly beautiful. It's got a nice kind of contrast in it. Horribly beautiful. He said Watford have got many good individuals, but what they won't have experienced many times is coming to a place like the Den. Um I really like this idea that maybe for the, you know however it's got here by hook or by crook he's fallen upon a formation and an approach that certainly last night brought the crowd into it um, because it really came across on TV I felt um, it is our secret weapon I mean, it's a very secret weapon they were talking about it on the on the pregame show if you can use the atmosphere of the den Michael not many teams fancy it Watford well, didn't fancy it last night at all mate. No, exactly. And, and considering it, it wasn't a full house at the den last night. You know, no, well, well, yeah. Yeah, the, the, there you go. There you go. 99.9% .9 of the ground. Harry won't, yeah. Yeah, just <laughs> right, two, two seats for empty, yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't full by any means, but there was still a decent noise coming from the, from, um, from the ground. And I was, I was talking to a couple of guys yesterday at work. They were talking about the Spurs Stadium and how the stadium's built and everything like that. And, and I sort of said to them, I said, well... You know, you can have your 60,000s at White Art Lane, or what was White Art Lane, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium there and, you know, the Emirates. Yeah. But, you know, 16,000, 17,000 fans at Millwall make an awful lot of noise. Um, and, you know, with the, Watford, 
you know, with the Watford fans there as well, like I said, they they bought a fair few fans, a fair play to them. They all left a bit earlier than I thought they were going to. They showed um, them streaming for the exits. Um, I think it was very early in the second half. Some of them were deciding yeah. to get on the Metropolitan line, go home. I can't yeah. blame them. I think but they were invited I, I, to go home by the crowd as well. Like, yeah, yeah. But was it, no, it was a good atmosphere. And do you know what, as well, without trying to sound too woke, because, you know, we are the woke podcast. Well, we mustn't be woke, no. We, mu- we mustn't be woke, you know. Whatever so. that is, we mustn't be. Yeah, exactly. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever they tell us. Um, but there, there, there didn't seem to be any sort of negativity towards the side last night or, or row it. You, you might have had the old, like, like someone missed pace for pass, someone might have said something. But mm. you didn't have, like, a sort of venomous atmosphere towards our team. You know, everyone was behind the side in, in the Millwall way that they do by slagging off the other team. But, um, but you know, ev- ev- everyone seemed to be, like, a little bit more together than we have been over the like, last few weeks and months. You know, there, there didn't seem to be that sort of toxicity towards our own players and um, management no. that there had been. And, and, and it thrived. It, it, it seemed more positive on the pitch. The passes were more positive. The players looked like they were smiling and enjoying the game a bit. Granted, yes, scoring goals early does help. But, you know, you've, you've got to be in the right mindset to score those goals early. But one thing I'll tell you what, one, I had this discussion with a couple of lads yesterday and this morning. You saying about the championship and being up to eight, you know, if we would have lost yesterday mm. and results hadn't gone our way, we would have gone down to eight, eight, four, nine, eight, four, something like that. Um, yeah. Do we genuinely think, now I know it's a PR thing from the EFL and the um, Sky and TV and all that, that the championship's so exciting because anything could happen. But do you think that's also got a lot to do with the fact that, this might sound bit controversial it's not a great league in the sense that all you need is sort of one team to be consistent and they run away with it so you know like Wolves ran away a bit a few years Red in a few years before that but if you look this season now no one's actually playing particularly well and the table's moving all over the place now yes you can say that's the excitement but you can also say no one's actually grabbed this league by the balls and thought actually a little bit of consistency will go for it it's funny, I was listening to the Guardian Football Weekly, reinforcing my tofu-eating credentials with all the listeners out there. Guardians of Football Weekly, I did a foot an EFL special show, I normally cover the Premier League and uh, international um, you know, football more than EFL. But anyway, they did a special because it's a you know it's an unusual thing for them to cover about. Um, but it's one of the points they made that there is no standout side in this in this division. And I suppose even if you look at the uh, the league table. I mean, yeah, we're eighth, and that's that's. This is a Millwall show, so that's what we're gonna um, we're gonna celebrate, if you like. But if you look at the the team at the top of the table, is QPR with Blackburn in second. Bottom of the table is Huddersfield with eleven points, and then West Brom sitting in the um, Saturday's visitors, of course, West Brom in the third relegation spot. Um, you know, it's it's a division where I think uh, what's the cliche? Anyone can beat anyone, and. Yeah. But that's that's not always a, an implication of great quality. It's an implication that everyone's pretty pretty average. I think that's probably the point that you're making there, really, Michael. I think it is an average division. I think um, I think especially over the last, last night, few not, years, especially over the last, last few years, years, it's been very average. Well, it was interesting. Cause one of my pre-match notes I made to myself was that um, Watford would be benefiting big time from the um, however long the parachute payment system lasts for, but they, they were up in the Premier League last season. So they should have a squad that should, if if money equals success, be um, you know decisively better than others. But they didn't look it last night, but all because of the way we played and, and the energy and um, you know the the, uh, the the emphasis we we took on the game, put on the game. So you know I think it is a division um, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing or a mediocre thing or a, a tribute to everyone's quality, I, I don't know. I kind of think everyone is much of a muchness, which is an opportunity for a club like Millwall because, you know, we, we've we've been up against some sides in recent years. I suppose Leeds would be one of them, which are this side. You know, whether we, we take the, 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 the piss out of Leeds a bit, but they are a big club and they do bring resources and it's only been their own incompetence after time that's held them back. It's not been the uh, the size of the crowds or the money that that would generate. But there's no real standout side in this in this division. I suppose you'd be looking at teams like Sheffield United and, and possibly Burnley coming down. But I mean, if West Brom are struggling, Michael, it, it does speak something about the general quality of the league because it's, it, it presents a real opportunity for us. If we, you know, we've said it each of the three seasons, I think, since um, Rowett's come in that 
you know, this could be a big, this could be a really big chance for us to get up. This could be a really big chance for us to get up, despite the, you know, the the kind of rather um, drab start to the season. But there's there's opportunity there, as last night showed. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I, I mean, I remember saying a couple of years ago. I think I was a two. I was obviously two, three seasons early, but. You know, this was when sort of leads had gone up and when some of the other teams, you know, because they go the other way as well. You know, Sheffield Wednesday had gone down and Sheffield Sheffield United had sort of gone down a few years back as well. But I, I said, um, you know, if you're a Nottingham Forest, you, why are you not pushing for promotion? Why are you not yeah. at top yeah. of the table? You know, like like I know look at Forest now, they're in a bit of a state. But, you know, they're, they're one of the historic clubs of the of, of not just the Football League, of... Um, of 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 the of the top flight as well, you know. Even, even Football the generally, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and no, same with like the Aston Villas. Why Aston Villas were in this division as long as they were? When you know, so as you say, I mean, who really? We said it on the first show of the season, didn't we? Who who do you look in the fixture list now and fear? Probably no one. Not not not. And I mean, we never used to sort of fear the likes of the um, sort of Leeds United, but you'd look at the the the, league, uh, the fixture list and be like, right, that's going to be a hard game. All right, we've got Norwich the week after that. We've got Leicester the week after that. You know, these are sort of big, biggish teams. Um, mm. I know Norwich have been a little bit yo. I'm talking about when they was in League One with us. But, you know, you, as you say, there's, there's, there's no one there who really sort of terrifies you. And this, this is an average league because... If you look at Blackburn, the I think the stat was wasn't it they lot they'd lost more games than the team at the bottom, but they're top. Even though yeah, they were they, they have a win or they lose. I think they drew one the other. I think they drew one midweek. Um, but anyway, yeah, they they tend to win or they lose. So yeah, you know, yeah, they're, they're, they're you, second in the table. Um, yeah, which, and you have you have, you, know. Bur- you have Burnley have only lost one and they're what third fourth. You know, I I don't yeah. I think all and and this just goes back to show like I was saying there all, all you need is just just consistency just be consistent. It's easier said than done in a league where I'm, I'm, I'm obviously sort of contradicting myself in a league where any, any team can speech marks beat anyone and, you know, it's unpredictable. But all you need to do is just show a little bit of consistency and you'll be all right. If you look at if you look at the Premier League, again, you've got, you've got Man, United, um, Man City and Liverpool and then Ch- Chelsea were on the coattails. But you had three consistent teams there. Mm. Any three of them really could have, you know, Chelsea was a little bit far behind, but the way the season started, three teams could win the league. You go into the Premier League seasons, four teams could win the league at the start of the season. And then it obviously peters down, but you still have two or three or four who tend to go for it. The Championship, mm. no no one ever no one ever goes for it. You know, no one ever thinks, do you know what, I'm going to try and win the league. You know, it's always that obsession with, oh, let's just try to get promoted again. So let's just be top six. You know, so if you just, I'm, I'm not saying that Millwall have got the capability to go for it, to, to win the league or Millwall have got the resources to win the league. But if you just go in that mindset of, all you yeah. need is consistency, and we'll be up there. That's that's what it is, you know. I, I, I'm I'm trying to labour a point, and I'm not sure if I'm coming across well. No, the point is well made. I mean, you're just looking at the league table. So yeah, QPR top of the table at the moment. Fifteen games in, listeners. 50, uh, Twenty-seven points, goal difference of seven, um, and then you've got t- six points. So two wins in the league will take you from Bristol City in twelfth all the way up to first. You know. So the, there's a large, I mean, below those, you've got some other, uh, you know, Sunderland 20 points, Birmingham 20, Watford 20, and so on. So it's it's a it's a, a division this season that doesn't offer any what I would call splash teams where they you they really stand out. They're going to r- rip away. There's no big London derby. I don't include QPR in my range of... I don't think there's many teams in the South East in the division this year, is there? Oh, I mean, Reading, Reading and Watford. We had that. I suppose we had that last night <laughs> with um, with Watford. Um, so there's, there's, it's, it's a division this season, I think, offers opportunity. With We seem to be, at last, by hook or by crook, discovering a formation and an approach that works. There's a... Uh, I've got this from Twitter. It's from Steve Evans. Big shout out to Steve Evans. He's put for the attention of Gary Rao. It's a screenshot from sky last night with um uh rowett and adam barrett in in the picture but they've got mill statistics by formation comparing the back five with this four two three one approach and the difference is marked michael i mean with back the back five we've got 1.18 points per game with four two three one we're getting 2.33 so we're you know we that's quite a decisive difference with this new approach Goal scored similarly 1.09 under the old wave, 1.67 under the new way. 
and goals conceded 1.45 under the back five and put 0 0.67 under the back four. So in a nutshell, the numbers are much, much better with the back four. So however we've come to it, however much Gary Rowe had to be dragged kicking and screaming towards it, and however much he still maybe yearns for a back five, those numbers don't lie. And, you know, the fact that we're now, um, you know, looking upwards, we're looking at the top six potentially, a good win on, on Saturday against... Um, uh, West Brom and our pantomime villain of Jed Wallace will put us in in top in top six contention. So you know that's how how, how the world turns. It turns very very quickly in football, doesn't it? And and confidence. You know we we will be flying going into Saturday, and West Brom obviously will be in desperate states because they're in the bottom three. So football turns very very fast. I'll tell you, we talk about consistency. As I said when I left the ground yesterday, you know what's going to happen now. They'll probably turn us over 3-0 at home, won't they? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Horribly beautiful, um, Gary Rowett said it was. Uh, just looking at a few internet comments, Twitter comments. Steve Lee praising Mason Bennett, Michael. He's contributed 60 minutes of tenacity, composure and self-belief in his own ability. And then Steve makes the point, take note, Tyler Bury. Gavin's making the same point that we've just made about it being a mediocre championship, four points off the top. Um, run of games coming up against teams at the bottom. I think that was a point they made on the TV coverage last night, our, our fixtures over the uh, the remainder of October and into November up until the World Cup break are what you might call winnable. I know that's bit, you know hostage to fortune a little bit, but they are, are winnable against teams in the, in the lower half of the table. Phil Clark makes an interesting point here, Michael. Uh, when Gary Rowett joined, Phil says, if you'd asked me how I'd hoped we'd play, it was like last night. All the positives that Rowett brings and some of the better elements that we already, already had done better. So it, basically what he's saying there is that's how he would have hoped that Gary Rowett would have developed the side. I think he's right. That was pretty much what I was hoping for. Hard attacking football, um, physical, and getting the job done against uh, you know better sides, so-called. Yeah, exactly. But it's always to sort of be careful what you wish for because, it. yes, some people might call it bland, some people might call it not great to see and stuff like that, but we never look over our shoulders with Rowett in charge. You know, we, we've gone from no. being a side, we've gone from being a side who plays sort of like cup football, and I love Kenny Jacket in my lifetime, what am I, 36 this year, Kenny Jacket's the best manager I've physically seen in my lifetime. I'm too young to appreciate the duck and all that kind of thing, even though it was, you know, in my early life. But, yeah. you know, for me, Jackie in, in, our, in my lifetime is the best manager I've, I've seen at the Den. And I'd have, the way it's going at the moment, you, you, if you're a football man and a sensible football man, you'd have, you'd have row it all day long because he's, you know, he's a, 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 a manager you're not going to really be in trouble with. He makes his teams hard to beat, um, techni uh, you know, the vast majority of the time. I know we, we went for a little bit of a run where we weren't playing too well. And and we are a stable, established championship side. You know, when you're up for those first couple of seasons, you do look over your shoulder a bit. After a while, when it starts going stale, you do look over your shoulder a bit. But what? How long has he been in charge now? Was this three years? It's three, three years. years. I think the anniversary is is kind of now, isn't it? It's three yeah, years ago yeah, that he so, joined us. Yeah. So three three years he's been in charge. We've never really been in any sort of any real trouble. When he when he came in. We were, we were the only way we were going was down, and he took us into the top half of the table. Three top three fin, top half finishes under him. I don't, I don't really see un, unless unless there is a real. And again, this is where I don't sound massively popular, but unless there is mass investment from the board, and I don't mean one point seven million, you know, for um, mm. flex. I'm talking tens, twenties, thirty million pound players. Now I know it's a little bit sort of wishy washy, and we can only wish, but unless he's got war chests like that to spend, he's he's not doing a bad job with the resources he's got. Yes, we're spending money that we don't normally spend, but again, one point seven million to these teams. Harry said it the other day on one of your shows, Nick. It's nothing to these teams. It's oh, absolutely no, 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 no. It's it's losable no. money. I mean, you know, you, they 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 wouldn't. Chelsea would laugh at the idea of one point seven million. It's just not. Um, it's not a figure that even really intrudes in their world. You know, it's just it's a so what factor. Um, I, I think you're right. I mean, if you, the, the league table is another cliche for your listeners. The league table doesn't lie, and consistently where we've finished 
um, reflects well on everything you've just said, Michael, about management within pretty limited resources. At the moment, you know, I mean, we've spent big on one on Fleming and, and one or two others. Um, but compared with the team we faced last night at Watford, I mean, you know, they, they bring vastly superior resources to bear, but you wouldn't have known that from um, at 90 minutes last night because, you know, they, they look very much second best. I, I think you're right. I think, I think the worst you can say, the worst you can say, and it has had some, some um, taken some flack over time, is that the football has been boring and tedious. And that's that's been a, a criticism that's been repeatedly thrown at him. And I suppose if you were counsel for the defence, you'd be pointing at the league table and say, well, what do you expect? You know, you're Millwall. And I think there is a bit of a um, philosophical debate to be had there. Not, not many of us at the den ever go in for philosophical debates, do we? But, well, maybe not where you sit, Nick, but where we sit, you know. we're. It's uh, all you talk about nothing else, do you? Yeah, <laughs> smoking jackets and brandy where we are in Blockford. <laughs> It was interesting. I was I did the um, radio show, it was Radio London with Aaron on um, was it Monday? I did it, um, and one of the uh, pundits on there, so I asked that: do, do we want to be promoted? Do we want the? Do we want the Premier League thing? Um, and I actually find it quite a hard question to answer sometimes because it does go quite deep. Um, I, of course, that getting promoted to the Premier League is the only game in town. So what else are you going to aim at? No one's going to aim at being a mediocre mid-table, um, you know, championship side and downwards. So you, you, you might settle for that if, if, if that's that's all that you're ever going to get. But equally, I, so I think we, yeah, I, I think to answer the question that was posed to me, you know, of course, going up is the target. Um, I, I don't know that Millwall as a club, Millwall as a support base, is, would be very easily premierized. I don't think um, we'd be, <laughs> I don't think we'd be sanitised, Michael. <laughs> Nick, some Which people, is the, Nick, Nick, some people were moaning yesterday it was an eight o'clock kickoff. Can you imagine if it was a, a, a Sunday at four o'clock? Don't people go on about the there's a popcorn stall, quite a harmless popcorn stall for kids. You know, not at, the at cold blow like, Not the <laughs> and but people will will get quite uh, angsty over that. And you know, even listening to the, uh, the 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 sound feed last night, I mean, it's Millwall as we've known it and loved it, isn't it? I would love to see what kind of reaction the Premier League, with its, um, you know, with its, in its many guises, makes of us if we do get into it. It might not last very long. I'll tell you but, what. Um, we'll it it will be a fans, ride. I must. The next, the next fans forum. Someone suggests that light show that West Ham had the other day in the Europa. The light or, show. Or, or, or conference. <laughs> see how far that gets you. Oh five, dear! Five, there we five are. For now, MC in while we have a light show. Can you imagine? Yeah, oh, no, spinning. It would just be lurch running around flicking switches, wouldn't it? Because we haven't got a sophisticated system. Spinning the discs. Last one from last night. Mickey Modern, he says, wow, I haven't seen this. So dominant for ages. We wanted it. A brilliant Tom Bradshaw masterclass. The man is on fire. Um, and I think that's a nice way to 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 close this. We're going to finish off shortly with um, the voicemails the chaps have been sending in. Michael, you've found a wonderful little gem. Before we do close, two things, really. Um, there's a Christmas party uh, at the club <laughs> featuring Soul and Motown with a W. Motown. No, 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 no. Mo Motown has a W. It doesn't have two Ws that the club thinks. <laughs> Motown, is, Motown is the Motor City, Millwall. It's M-O-T-O-W-N, Motown. <laughs> not Mo Town. That's Lawn Mo Town. That's that's Sur Surbiton. <laughs> oh, mate, you know where it's going to be. It's going to be. It's going to be at the B and Q at um, the old Kent Road, isn't it? Oh, Soul very... and Mo Town. Bring bring your your lawn mowers to the the Christmas and party your head, and your hedge trimmers. Jesus, oh, it's the sixteenth of December, Friday night. Spell, um, check, spell check Millwall Football Club for God's sake. Come on. A, buff a buffet and uh, live music and £25 a person. Well, for can, I, can I just say, though, before we carry on about £25 a person, geez, but one, who who looks at these posters and signs this off? Who's... No one with any knowledge of music. Let's put it that way. Or Soul spelling. and Motown. M-O-W-T-O-N. T-O-W-N. Oh, jeez. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, who signs yeah. it off? I don't know. Anyway, change it. If you're listening, Mill, change it. It's Motown, M O W. Can't forget the Motor City, Michael. Um, just want to close. Wish wish your dad well, mate. He's, he's not very well at the moment, I understand. 
No, no, he's um, yeah, it's been a bit of a hard week for him, bless him. He's he's been a bit under the weather. Um, he was going to go to the den yesterday, but under doctor's advice, he's um, yeah, he's got a, he, he had to stand doors, couldn't couldn't have the stress of a Millwall Watford game. I mean, I can't have no. the stress of a Millwall football game. Um, but he no. yeah, he's um, he, he's currently uh, he's currently up in uh, up, up in hospital for a few days, bless his heart. Uh, so yeah, get well soon, Avery Senior. Um, Avery Senior, match. indeed. The unofficial mascot of the uh, uh, Acton Mill podcast. No one knows Michael's dad's name. He's only known as Michael's dad. So, um, and I met him obviously at, uh, when we did the grassroots last season at uh, at uh, Welling. Yeah. Um, so I just want to send my and all the boys on the show, and I think all the listeners, best wishes to Michael's dad. Probably listening in some hospital somewhere. Get yourself back down at Den soon. Um, everyone's rooting for you. There we are, listeners. So. I think we've probably covered the game. I'm going to close out the show now, Michael, with the various many voicemails that have been sent to me in the aftermath of that excellent win last night, 3-0 over Watford. Big thank you to Michael for coming on the show. Thank you, mate, taking time no out of your day. No problem at all. And thank, thank you again, dear listener, as always, for listening to the um, sludge that comes out of my mouth. <laughs> thank you listeners uh, we're going to close out now with other voicemails until the next show which will be at the weekend bye for now hello here's a turn up for the fucking books listeners Mike Hayden on the line celebrating that 3-0 victory against Watford I did not expect that tonight uh, excuse the background noise I'm just at my recording space uh, which is London Bridge Station um, but yeah, what a performance tonight. I mean, honestly, um, Tom Bradshaw gets his goal against Bristol City finally and then he goes on a little run. He loves a little run of form. Let's hope we see it again. It helped with three goals tonight. He was superb. Um, and, uh, you know, the whole team just epitomised what it is to be a Millwall player. You know, the effort. Um, we absolutely just battered them all over the pitch. Um, you show a side like Watford... Um, you know that and that they don't fancy it because I mean this is a team that you know come down from the Premier League they've got no identity they're a club that are just run in an extremely strange fashion um, and they, they don't really embrace what it is to be an English football club and um, I'd hate to be a Watford fan I really would uh, and best of all that idiot Slavan fucking Bilic is in charge and he got absolute dogs abuse tonight um, but yeah it was incredible to be freeing it up at half time um, funny situation actually in the in the, the old uh, block four toilets um someone said at half time um are we three nil up or am i on drugs someone else said both mate i think that just sums up all. <laughs> but yeah we uh, couldn't believe it really um but second half was fantastic as well um i think we just saw the game out i mean watford i don't think really had a shot on target all game which was just unbelievable um, speechless to be honest by far and a million miles the best performance of the season has Gary Rowett found his team yes I think he has um, can we continue playing like that may as well what's stopping us um, has Rowett just to decided to just go for it now because I tell you what looking at that table this season is for the taking there is no runaway top two anyone can get there not saying it'll be us I'm not getting that carried away but what I am saying is that, you know, why can't we continue to perform and we are, we will see ourselves in those really competitive positions. Um, West Brom's going to be an exciting one on Saturday. Uh, they're in disarray as well. If we can show the same effort and go again and put them under pressure, um, I'm no doubt that'll be another successful result. But, yeah, just incredible, incredible win tonight. It Re- really was. Um, you know, that is the... That is the sort of we've got army or wall back sort of performance. Anyway, let's hope I'm not leaving a message after West Brom going a row it out. But I mean, you know, that was row it in Millwall at their very, very best. Long may it continue. Cut on your lines. Hello, uh, Nick. Matt Richards here. Um, what a good game. What a good game. Great win. Um, I mean, it was just the uh, first half played so well, didn't we? Um, we just we're just up and at them. I mean, the whole team. It's different to pick. I mean, obviously you go through the team, but the whole team plays so well. I was worried before the game. I thought, you know, what for a good side? They've got some good players coming forward. Uh, one at the weekend, and you know, I was thinking, oh, you know, we come out of a draw. But I mean, from Bradshaw's first goal and what a hit, 
I mean, big boot up from long. Defender got caught underneath it, and but it's just a superb finish. And the second one with Bennett crossing in, and he's there again. And um, so pleased with Bradshaw, but we just we just looked so well, didn't we? We just played so well. Malone, he came in, played really well. We combined with Bennett well down the left. Um, Savile and Mitchell in the middle they're just onto everything um, and I just thought the defence as well I mean Bradshaw you've got to give him man of the match for his hat trick but I thought Hutch was just Sean Hutchinson was just brilliant he just marshalled that defence I mean I think they didn't they didn't even have any well I think at the end there was a header which Jules Long saved um, but there was not one shot on target which is amazing when you think you know, Watford came down last year and they didn't, you know, they hardly penetrated. It just shows you how solid we looked throughout that defence and midfield. So, yeah, I mean, the first half performance is brilliant. And then you just think, oh, they're going to come back in, don't you? And we kind of, you know, we're, we're saying, oh, you know, next goal is going to be really critical, really critical. But what a professional performance the second half. It was just, um, that was really pleasing to see as well that we kind of, you know, good game management. Good use of subs by Rowett, you know, bringing on Styles at 60 minutes for Bennett, who must have been knackered. Um, but all the subs came on, did a job, and that sort of shows the importance of having a really strong bench, which is what we've got now. You know, we can bring on the likes of Honeyman, Shackleton, and you know, they're all strong players, and we can finish the game really well. So, what a great performance, great win, three points. It's looking good. Big game Saturday. Um, you know if we play with that same sort of spirit that same fight and passion then you've got to fancy us against West Brom so um, yeah happy days come on your lines Hi Nick just ringing in um, after the 3-0 victory at the Den uh, against Watford amazing night really um, to uh, name a cliche a game of two halves <laughs> in reference to football is very appropriate I mean the second half um, Watford threw absolutely everything they had at us I don't think we had a chance on goal we threatened a couple of times didn't really have much of the ball um, but we defended we kept them out it was inevitable really that they'd come out like that they were a very impressive team very fast lots of speed big physical presence up front with Saar and they could really move the ball around and they did move us around but what a solid defensive performance first off I was so impressed um, they came out they had a couple of minutes when they started to set out their stall and we were right at them we did not let them settle I mean, in terms of a man of the match, you've got to give it to Bradshaw. Three fantastic goals. I'm looking forward to seeing the replay when it comes out and the extended highlights because I'm in the CBL, as you know, and everything happened down the other end in terms of Millwall. So, as usual, it was I couldn't really pick out what was going on. But what I could see was a very, very good defensive performance from the back four. Um... Very, very energetic play in the midfield and some consistent pressing at the front and it paid dividends. I mean, Watford will be thinking, you know, what happened in that first half because it was an amazing Millwall performance. And I said to some of my fellow supporters, well, let's see what happens in the second half because they're going to come out, guns are blazing and they did. But we held firm. They lost their heads a bit, I think, Watford. They picked up six or seven yellow cards and really one of them should have been sent off. Uh, We were tenacious in the tackle. Scott Malone played well at left back and our back four is definitely the way to go. I think that if Rowett had put a back five out with two wing backs, we would have lost that match because they could really move the ball And with that vacuum that the back five creates in the middle, it puts so much pressure on the middle too. Um, They would have definitely given us a different game. So a really solid performance. 
Um, fantastic evening. I just want to say it's my father's birthday today, October the 19th. He died three years ago, uh, but today was his birthday. The last game of football I saw with my father was Millwall Watford, and we lost that one at the Den. And this one, a lovely birthday present for him and for us. 3-0 Millwall. Come on, you Lions. Hi, Nick. It's Angelo, mate. Just on the way home from the game. Um, yeah, I never expected that today, mate. Never in my wildest dreams. I, I thought today was the banana skin where we would lose. But I have to say, there is no team in the championship that would have coped with us first half, mate. We were phenomenal. The, the press, the, the, the intensity... Of, of that first half performance was completely outstanding, mate. They couldn't breathe Watford. I said to my mate, I said, a lot of these Watford uh, young superstars, they might not be able to cope with the den. And then when uh, when we was all over them like a rash, they literally couldn't cope. And uh, we literally smashed them up first half. Uh, Unbelievable performance, mate, in that first half. Second half, completely dead, but we're OK with that. We kept our clean sheet. Lovely three points. That's 10 points out of 12. Three wins on the bounce. We are moving in the right direction. Completely happy for, for Bradshaw with a hat-trick. Fantastic. He worked so hard tonight. Every player was outstanding. You know, a long, I can see the benefits of long. Um, uh, uh, um, ahead of, of uh, Bart now, um, even from the kickoff. I don't know if you noticed, but Cooper was up front for the kickoff. Um, so he's just a weapon that obviously, you know, he's got that, he's, he's got that um, benefit, which obviously um, we don't have with Bart. But I feel bad for Bart, but I think it's the right thing to have Long in there now when he's kicking. Um, he's just so much more comfortable apart from that one slip in the second half. Um, Cooper outstanding, Hutch outstanding, McNamara outstanding, Malone started a little bit dodgy but got better as the game went on, um, uh, Savile brilliant, just clear, clearing up, mopping up, Billy, Billy should be going to the World Cup mate if he carries on like this, absolutely outstanding that kid, he's getting better and better and better and better, brilliant, uh, Fleming, Loads of throw-ins. Uh, he didn't do much on the pitch, but he, he tried really hard. He was running around even towards the end of the game. Vogie worked so hard. Bennett, brilliant from Bennett. He, we got 60 minutes out of him, which was great. Uh, he nearly scored, but obviously Bradford, uh, Bradshaw tapped it off him. Fantastic, honestly, brilliant. Really unexpected. We made Watford look shit. And um, just very, very good. Best 45 minutes for a long, long time. Um, hats off to Rowett, you know what I mean? We've got to give the guy credit where credit's due. Um, and um, we've got easier games coming up now. So, you know, let's let's keep that intensity and uh, we can make a right push if we carry on like this on this system. Fantastic, fantastic. Well done to the guys. Uh, well done, Millwall. Come on, you Lions. Well, what a night. Uh, James Blewett, uh, Millwall halfway line here. Just coming back from the den. Wow, three 0 to the uh, to the Lions and a very well deserved uh, win. I went to Bristol City on Saturday and I thought I could see real progress after uh, what, to be honest, was some fairly faltering wins. I thought against poor teams, but uh, hats off to Gary Rowett. That four four two continues to really deliver the goods. And I, but to be honest, as what brilliant as Bradshaw was tonight and his finishing was absolutely excellent. I thought Mason Bennett was superb. I thought Mason Bennett brought um, brought uh, energy, direction and real momentum to the team. Of course, someone said to me, well, yeah, but he's never fit. Truth is, fit Mason Bennett wouldn't be playing for Millwall. He's a really good, really good player. I thought around the back as well, we were excellent. I thought Hutchinson brings a real authority. I could see him bossing down the, uh, the other players around him in the way that you need uh, your, your top central defender to do. And the midfielder game, uh, Billy Mitchell again, had a really good game. So uh, two, two points off the playoffs, four points off the top. What a weird season. T uh, three weeks ago, I did a, uh, uh, a poll on Twitter and 80% of Millwall fans wanted Gary Rowett gone now. Uh, I'm not sure many of us will agree with that now, and uh, I'm sure there's plenty of us who'll be uh, 
uh, enjoying 2020 hindsight. But uh, exciting times for the Lions, I think. I think we've got a bit of momentum going, and uh, it could be a very interesting cu- next couple of months before the uh, the the, uh, the break for the uh, World Cup. Come on, you Lions! Well, fucking hell. That was a bit different, wasn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Harry Warren, chairman of the Gary Rowett fan club. Anything else is bollocks. Um, four at the back, we're, we're, we're unbelievable. Hutchinson and Cooper were immense. Um, that's the best performance since Nottingham Forest away before the pandemic. Um, first Milwatrick, I think, since the, before the pandemic, since Matt Smith's goals those, that night. That was, for lack of a better word, a total Millwall performance. Aggressive in the first half, punished Watford for their naivety, their defensive frailties. And then second half was so, so professional um, to see it out, nearly conceding at the end. But they were always going to have one chance, but luckily it didn't go in, so it's a 3-0 win. Um, you know, it, it'd be, uh, there's nothing there tonight to to moan about really is there there's nothing to do but praise that performance and praise Tom Bradshaw the first goal that is a that is a game pivotal moment to take the lead against a side who 16 of their 18 match players cost more than our 1.7 million for Fleming so put that in perspective that's how what what we were up against tonight made them look so so ordinary the the goal from from Tom Bradshaw for the fir- for his first of his three is purely a brilliant little knock inside. Um, yeah, he's been put in by their mistake, but it's the two touches. It's one touch to get it out in front of him, and our uh, our folly finish with his laces. It's fantastic, fantastic finish. Then the second goal, it all comes from a Jake Cooper win on the edge of the box Bennett's gone round the back pulled it back across and Bradshaw's between the two goal sticks like we knew uh, two goal posts like we knew he would be because that's what he does tapped it in and then his third again is a Cooper flick on Cooper wins it clicks it on into the box and Bradshaw takes a touch off his chest goes to shoot first time doesn't takes another touch to set himself the goalkeeper's already gone down because he thinks he's going to snap it left footed with the first touch with his foot, which is his second touch in, to- in total, before before basically finishing it pretty much into an empty net because keep was already on the floor. It was a fantastic, fantastic performance, and you know, very, very impressive from the Lions. Four points off top, one point off the playoffs. Fucking hell, four games ago it was doom and gloom. Now we're going to win the league. Anyway, roll on to Saturday. Come on, you lions. You're listening to Achtung Moorwall, broadcasting from the beautiful South Bermondsey. Accept no substitute.